We are embarking on our carriage ride through the Gettysburg battlefield, complete with tour guide. Like, subscribe, and comment down below because we're really excited. Carriage Company. Uh, this is a unique pair also because of the fact that they are full sisters and they also have two full brothers, Fred and George, who are named after the Weasley twins and act just <laughs> like them from Harry Potter. And Catherine is over here. We call her Kate for short. She's on the left. She's the lead horse of the team and the matriarch of the entire herd. And this is her sister Trina. Katrina over here, we call her Trine for short. Uh, Catherine is, like I said, the matriarch of the herd. If we have a problem with any of the pulling horses, we put them with Catherine, and by the end of that ride, they don't ever want to come back and do what they're told. <laughs> Uh, now, if you ever have to worry about them pulling this carriage, any horse, no matter what the size of the horse, can pull four times its weight from a mini on up. So these girls weigh a little bit over 2,000 pounds, so that means one of them can pull 8,000 by themselves. As a team, they can pull four to five times what a single horse can pull. So unless you all can get up to, had a really big lunch to put us up to about 40,000 pounds, I think we're going to be okay for today's ride. That's all we got. <laughs> Time for our carriage ride. There were no trees on that hill. There are too many trees in Gettysburg. Open hills up. We want to go to the cemetery. We're going to see a lot of cannons up there because without the tree cover, it's a tremendous artillery clap. That's the place to be. So again, without tree cover, you can like see everybody else. Well, I'll tell you what, with their part by line of sight, you're going to be able to see your enemy. It's called the cemetery hill because the town cemetery was and is over there on the other side of the hill. Passing by the Ohio Monument. Saturate the Union line to soften it up. He's going to saturate it with artillery fire. That's around one o'clock that afternoon when some 150 cannons along the tree line behind me begin shooting at the ridge up there. And of course, a few minutes later, some 150 Union guns begin shooting back. That's going to go on for the next couple of hours. But the problem is, there's no breeze like there is right now. It's dead calm. It makes a lot of smoke. Without a breeze, that smoke quickly fills the field out. Very quickly, nobody can see what they're shooting at. Consequently, most of the shots go long. Look like the bridge is there, you look like the tree guy back there. And neither side does any serious damage to the other. To their right, there's a few dozen Tennessee boys. To their right, there's a few dozen North Carolina people. Several hundred Virginia packing stone walls are where all these folks are today. The caliber. This is what they're using. The little house that we just passed, yes. what is that? The Kodori house. That's the family name. Who's here? The little barn, I think, is a reproduction. The big barn is definitely a reproduction. The next little barn, look at the side, what kinds of holes in it. Wow. So that's not a reproduction. No, that the little barn is at this point being held together by some um, bars at the top. Every time I had a Massachusetts visitor, I'd say, what is this? And finally, um, one year I had the president of the Massachusetts Historical Society on a tour. So I said, what is this? And she called me. That comes right off of the Massachusetts State Seal. It is a reference to pre-colonial time when the early settlers were contending with Indians in the Massachusetts colony. 
I wonder how far I can run out, honey. So there you go. So, That's what it's all about. So it, the majority of the battle took place out here in the fields, not necessarily in the town. That's correct. The Confederates are occupying buildings in the town. They're up on the second floor, they're up in the attic, they're knocking out windows and brickwork so they can snipe at Union soldiers up there on Cemetery Hill. Uh, and there's a couple of buildings there that, buy, uh, that bear evidence of all the gunfire. We're, there. we're staying in one. We're at Which the, one? We're staying in the wealthy house with the um, brick house in. Okay. Yeah, we got three uh, gunshots with my other door. Okay. Yeah, and if you look at the south wall of the Farnsworth house, which is down at the bottom of Baltimore mm -hmm. Street, yep. it's little white dots. Those are all the chipped brick. And there's a gray painted brick building over on Washington Street, just south, just north of the hospital. And you can see all the pockmarks there, too. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's a lot of gunfire. A, did they, like, stand out in the middle of the field, or was there, like, a camp? Hospital no. or all behind the lines. They're fighting the Napoleonic style. So from the time of Napoleon. Well, it was effective in Napoleon's time because back then the weapons were deadly only when you got inside 100 yards. But in the intervening 40 years, rifling has been introduced inside the barrel of the gun. And the shape of the bullet changed around what I showed you. capture the, the bullet farther, straighter, faster. You can kill somebody at 400 yards with these rifled muskets. And they haven't figured out yet. It's a good idea to spread out a little bit or hide behind something. Understand, all of the Civil War commanders, north and south, all went to the same school. They, they all went to West Point. Education. Exactly, West Point up there in New York. What are we looking at? The Red Barn, isn't that where the genius came out of? Yeah. The red barn? Yeah. yeah. So they went here all the That's all. That's a mile and a quarter they got to yeah. cover. And you On the top of the hill is Little Round Top. Inside the peach orchard, which is where the battle was at, we're going to learn a little bit more. We learned that where all the monuments are placed is where the actual soldiers were placed. On the other side of the monument, it tells us that they came, to they came here with 209 people, and two hours later they had lost 149 of them. That's the Napoleonic style of fighting. There's their left flank marker over there, and there's their right flank marker over there, which tells us they're all facing that way. The problem is, they're taking fire from South Carolina, but at the same time, Mississippi's advancing from over there. So now what do you do? You can't just turn like this because your buddy's standing right there. So you can't use your gun. So the whole line has to do something called a wheel. They all have to swing to, to combat the Mississippians. Now what have they done? They just exposed their left flank to the South Carolinian. This is not a good place to be. You don't know which way to shoot. Westport. Yeah, good old Dan Sickles. He's, uh, he's out of Tammany Hall in New York City, which was the power center of New York politics at the time. And, and that should pretty well tell you everything you need to know about the guy. Um, so, this matter here, they're facing this way, they're facing that way, and the attack is coming from these directions. So things are going to unfold pretty quickly out here. As it's all signal flags. Pretty soon the topographical engineer from the Union Army got up there, a fellow named Warren. He took one look and realized right away that something was going to happen. The Confederates would overrun that hill and they'd launch an attack on the bridge around that hill. So to combat that, he also noticed some reinforcements of the Union coming down the road toward us. And then he said, well, then down the hill to stop that column of men. And they managed to turn around about 1,400 and got it back up on the hill. I call it the Walmart theory of inventory. It's on the shelf just in time. Same thing with these soldiers. They're barely in place when Alabama Confederates come out of the tree and go on the big round top of the hill. The boys from Maine, next to them down the hill, Texas, trying to get up the face of the hill to 
Jordan follow the Texans. They're fighting in the valley at the bottom of the hill. Just beyond the street from the tree line. So South Carolina troops are in the barnyard down there. An interesting thing we just learned, if you come when the peaches are actually in bloom, you can pick a peach off the tree and not get in trouble because they're here and you can take a peach from the Gettysburg Orchard. Right. Way cool. July is when they're in bloom? Late July. Late, Late July. July. That's when you need to come to Gettysburg and take a tour of the battlefield. And on the left, you can see a round hole up in the brickwork of the barn. Put there by a Confederate shell fired oh, from yeah. about a mile behind me. By this time in the war, the qualities of gunpowder how would we know a detail like that? Because they the went soldier in. soldier told us he went in the house and ate breakfast. Found food on the table and had his breakfast. Someone said it was still warm. Yeah. Hell, I was. Oh my <laughs> gosh. They kind of went like three days without food and water. Yeah, they're hungry. Now the original roadbed is not what we're on at the moment. The original roadbed actually ran between the stone wall and the little white picket fence. And it's almost a straight line coming off the ridge. Now it's here. And then over to my right front. That's the time there's a little 300 on the field. They're constantly rotating for maintenance. So they are actual cannons the that tools, were. I, I will tell you there's probably a couple dozen reproductions. I'm not sure the exact okay. number. But most of the tubes are original to the Civil War. Wow. And I know of only one that's original to this battle, and that's out on the west side of town. Okay. So, when you look at these, remind me, we'll stop later, we'll look at them, and I can tell you the difference between a real cannon and a fake one. If you learn nothing else today, you'll learn that. <laughs> Who's going to fight harder? The people on have the boys. home Good. field advantage. Yeah. If you had a Pennsylvania relative in this fight, you could find his name on that monument. Mm -hmm. All of them are named on the tablets around the base. Wow, 30,000. 33. 33,000 yeah. Pennsylvanians. Statues include senior commanders in the Union Army who came out of Pennsylvania. On the right front corner is the wartime governor, Curtin. On the left front corner is President Lincoln. Up on the dome is the mythical winged goddess of victory. Do you know the name? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Didn't name. cover that one, huh? Athena. No, oh, it's Ar not Athena. Artemis. Everybody gets Athena. It's not Athena. Artemis. It's not Artemis. Greek goddess of victory. Oh, shit. Her name is Nike. Nike. No. Yeah, Nike. Yeah. Yeah. Nike translated to victory. Yeah. the horse statue up there. Uh, that's the cavalryman and there would have been a cavalry uh, facility back there. The chief of the cavalry I think had his headquarters back there. Probably 130 million now. I hear it when I was a kid. But that's Chief Tamaman. He was chief of the tribe along the Delaware River. Regarded as a great war and a great implement. the water. <laughs> That's a good dumb question. <laughs> so I've got to remember that one. Yeah, apparently, apparently it was just asked yesterday. We're going to stop right here because the window blocked the people staying in the yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to get off one more time. We've got a good 15. When you stand up here and actually look down at the battlefield, it truly is awe-inspiring and amazing to try to imagine what happened here. We just learned that this scroll marker with the rose is literally where the battle ended. This is where the Brigadier General 
fell here. This is where it ended. Wow. They held the high ground and after three days, Louis Armistead fell here with his hand on the cannon. Despite heavy losses, clusters of Confederates pushed toward the angled stone wall in front of us, which is right here. Confederate General Louis Armistead jabbed his hat on the tip of his sword and held it up, guiding his men across the wall, shouting, come on boys, let's give them the cold steel. Reaching the Union line at the wall, men from both armies collided in a mass, struggling, pushing, fighting, and killing. Armistead fell mortally wounded as his men outnumbered were either killed or captured. The few that escaped made their way back towards Seminary Ridge. And where we just were is where he fell. Our way up to Little Round Top, one of the highest points of the battle. And this is breathtaking. Wow. The complete high ground of the battle. Monument up on top of Little Round Top. You can go inside, but as you can tell, Run 50 States My Way, there is a school group here. So we are not going to go in. But you can definitely tell why this piece of land was so vital and so important because it's the highest ground. The Valley of Death. We are standing on top of Little Round Top, looking west over Plum Run and the Valley of Death. Devil's Den and the Slaughter Pen, each a maze of rock, outcrops, and boulders may be seen down the valley to your left, which is that over there. On the afternoon of the second day of the battle, Union forces seized this strategic high ground, which they held for the remainder of the battle. Many officers and men from both sides died in this struggle. The positions of these cannons really tell a story. Sharpshooters, sniper rifles, and these cannons would have made this such an important staging ground for the Union troops. Another key strategic part of the Battle of Gettysburg is Devil's Den. Technically, it is closed right now because they are literally building sidewalk and doing some work around it. But this is Devil's Den. You can see why it was so strategic, why it was so important for snipers, sharpshooters, and just as a place to fortify. That's Little Round Top where we just were. And then Devil's Den down here. This was a Native American area and the Native Americans wouldn't even come in this area because they felt like it was filled with evil spirits. According to the different ghost books and things like that, Devil's Den is still a very haunted place and location. So here is Devil's Den, the Battle of Gettysburg. I wish we could go up in the rocks, but that's okay. We can't now because they are fixing it. Passed it, but we didn't stop. Um, Spangler Spring, which on July 2nd, the right flank of the Union Army of the Potomac rested at the base of Culp's Hill near Spangler Spring. The men of the Union 12th Corps, who occupied the wooded slopes, spent the morning building formidable breastworks of felled trees, earth, fence, um, rocks. Longstreet's attack upon the Union left flank forced Major General Meade to order nearly the entire 12th Corps to reinforce his battle, his embattled left flank. Only one New York Brigade of 1,400 men, led by Union Brigadier General George Green, and a few depleted regiments of the 1st Corps remained to hold the hill. At sunset, men of Confederate General Edward Johnson's division of Lieutenant General Richard Ewan's 2nd Corps advanced from the east of from east of here to attack the Union position. 
Johnson's men easily overran empty Union breastworks on the lower slope of the hill, but Green's New Yorkers, reinforced with troops from the 1st and 11th Corps, repulsed every attack against the summit of Culp's Hill during fighting that continued until 10 p.m. So this is literally where they were fighting in the middle of the night. And we learned today at breakfast that it was so confused and so dark that one man um, is reported to have asked for ammunition saying, hey, I ran out of my rounds. I'm out. I'm out. And another guy said, hey, here's some, here's some. So they exchanged it. And the guy who gave the ammunition to the other guy gave him the other side's ammunition so it didn't fit which means that they literally were that close to each other and didn't even know it. Unbelievable when you think about it. The final Gettysburg battlefield location that we are visiting is Culp's Hill. This was a strategic location where everything kind of converged, basically. The three-day battle of Gettysburg transformed Culp's Hill. Evidence of its violent history still mark the landscape today. The breastworks, monument, and memorials the veterans left behind are tangible links to the past. So this is Culp's Hill. And there's an observation tower. Do you want anything specific taken that I don't take? No. Okay. Well, that's what I say, a lot of us didn't even see. Took a picture of Gettysburg. And yeah, it's, uh, it's not very often you're going to get a sky view of Gettysburg. It's beautiful. So again, another fortified location that was key for strategic reasons to make sure that the Union held the high ground. That's really what won this battle, was the Union holding the high ground. Absolutely beautiful and really off the beaten path. The Pennsylvania Monument, and Ryan is up there. Let's go find him. Sorry. On top of the Pennsylvania Monument are these little markers that actually tell you where things are located. So little round top is that way. Devil's Den is that way, where we just came. The wheat field, the peach orchard, is that way. Here comes the big tour bus. And again, just another vantage point. Of the battlefield. Run 50 States My Way, what an incredible way to see the battlefield and learn history. You can take a bus tour, you can do an audio tour with the markers and kind of drive yourself or you can move at the speed of history, which is exactly what we have done with the Victorian Carriage Company. It is what I recommend, the pace, being able to get on and off, and just the knowledge of the tour guide is incredible. The carriage is such a fun way to see the battlefield and to see the history. Highly, highly recommend it, 100%. This is how you should come and see Gettysburg. Just absolutely awe-inspiring, again, to think about what happened here. So with that, like, subscribe, and comment down below. And again, sorry for the wind, but it is very windy up here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania today. Um, but we hope you enjoyed our tour through Gettysburg Battlefield. And with that, this is Ashley signing off from 50 States My Way. We'll have more from Gettysburg in our next video.